Roadshow News Recap starts right now. Lots of great stuff to cover this week, but our headline story is all about the next generation Toyota Sequoia. The automaker released two teaser images of this large three-row SUV, and Sean and I will fill you in on what they mean. It's the end of the road for V12s, at least at BMW. The German concern is sending the engine configuration off into the sunset by offering 12 M760i sedans in the U.S., each with, you guessed it, a 6.6-liter V12 under the hood. And in case the standard DBX isn't speedy enough, Aston Martin is hinting that an even more potent version of this SUV is in the works, one that could be the most powerful luxury utility vehicle ever built. And finally, we will wrap things up with a very important announcement, so make sure you stick around for that. But otherwise, happy Friday, and Sean, it is always wonderful to see your smiling face. All smiles. Yes, good to see you, Craig. As always, happy Friday, everybody. Good to be back. And uh, yeah, we got a lot of good stuff to talk about. Some uh, great topics that popped up this week. It's uh, rather SUV heavy, but isn't the market these days. <laughs> That's that pretty, You've just described the entirety of the auto business for the last 10 years. <laughs> yeah. So, But uh, yeah, 2023 Toyota Sequoia is kind of our headlining story. We don't have a whole lot to say about it, but Toyota did acknowledge that a new version is coming out and the automaker shared a couple photos of it. So there is, we can talk about some things. Yes. Yeah. And like, by God, it's about time. Just like the Tundra, obviously these two vehicles are closely related right on the same platform. The Sequoia, like the Tundra was way, way, way overdue for just a little bit of love. So it's good to see that it's getting a full makeover. Um, And, this new generation, which by the way, I believe this new Sequoia is only going to be the third generation. The third, yeah. that's it. There's only yeah. been two. The one that is currently on sale has been in production since 2007. Craig. Whew. Whew. It's <laughs> basically the same vehicle, but Toyota has obviously <laughs> updated it along the way to pack yeah. some more technologies into it. But boy, if you're looking for a new car that feels like it's just from the late, 2000s still it is the sequoia right now because it literally is fundamentally the same vehicle you bought at the end of the 2000s the year i graduated college (laughs) yeah so how like what other automaker can keep a vehicle around that long and not get like lambasted right like it seems only toyota can get away with that i yeah i feel like it may have just been a case of uh there's nothing wrong with it don't fix it it's not broken it's still selling enough to be profitable though i did look up the sales figures for the sequoia because you certainly don't see many of them on the roads um obviously when it was first uh, a new vehicle it sold in the highest numbers you know 30 40 50 thousand units nothing Hmm. nothing too shabby i think it had its best year in the early 2000s it was about 70 some thousand units um strangely enough it didn't rebound even after uh, the great recession or anything Mm -hmm. like that. It, it kind of dwindled down to 11,000, 18,000 units, those kinds of things. And I I guess they had to do something then. Yeah. You you know, yeah. Especially as you know, big SUVs have definitely come back in popularity. And for anyone who isn't familiar with the Sequoia and I wouldn't blame you because it's not a vehicle that's really on top of anyone's minds. It's Toyota's competitor to the Tahoe, and the uh ford expedition yeah so i mean that's a big segment and you know gm and ford make a lot of money and move a lot of those tahoes and expeditions so uh toyota's answer is the sequoia it's just been neglected for a very long time the new one like you said craig we don't have a lot to say about it because toyota hasn't dished out a ton of information but we can assume it's going to follow the new tundra in terms of powertrain (laughs) interior maybe even uh, the front clip design kind of thing with that big grill. I got to say the one teaser image, though, I'm getting Jeep vibes, like Grand Cherokee, uh, mm-hmm. Wagoneer-ish vibes from that taillight, um, and maybe even a little bit of that new Land Cruiser that we're not getting here. Yeah, definitely. be interesting to see what they do, but um, I-, I would bet the farm that uh, we're going to have a twin-turbo V6 under the hood 
probably offered in two flavors, the standard and then one with a mild or a hybrid system as well. Uh, the new Tundra has a 14 inch touchscreen that you can get and lots of standard driver aids. So it's probably a good bet. To, <laughs> the new Sequoia will have all of that uh, and share its underpinnings with the Tundra. It will be interesting to see though, because does the current Sequoia have an independent rear suspension? I don't honestly remember. It's think... been so long since I've ever even thought about this vehicle. But is it a live axle? Because the Tundra obviously has a live axle. And it'd be That's interesting a... to see if they continue with that. That's a good question. Um, I just kind of want to see that right now really quickly. Um, I'm doing the same. <laughs> are you? Well, let's see who finds it first. Uh, or go ahead and you look for that, Craig, and I'll talk more about the Sequoia. Um, but... Yeah, I'm I'm excited because, you know, I think the new Tundra looks really good and and really all Toyota needs to do is offer kind of a viable alternative to uh a, if it's a Silverado or an F150 when it comes to the Tundra, um an alternative to a Tahoe or an Expedition. And I think Toyota could be more successful with the Sequoia mm -hmm. just because, you know, pickup truck buyers are so firmly focused and uh, corralled in by Ram, uh, Ford, and uh, GMC mm -hmm. and Chevy, where I think it would be easier to be more successful with a large three-row body-on-frame SUV like the Sequoia if they market it and it's competitive and it does things like a Tahoe and an Expedition can. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think I conceivably could see a new Sequoia doing better than the new Tundra, but we'll have to see. Uh, like basically every new car launching, they're hard to find. Supply mm -hmm. is limited because of crazy supply chain issues because of the pandemic. So it would be really hard, to, I think, to even get a good gauge on the situation because I guarantee you any GM and Ford dealer, they're selling out of every <clears> Tahoe <throat> and Expedition they can build. And the yeah. same thing is happening probably with the new Tundra and will happen with the new Sequoia. Let's see. It looks like this the uh, current version the ancient model does have a fully boxed frame and a rear independent suspension. Well, so there, there you, go. you go. No live axles to be had. And that's like a detail I should have remembered, but gosh, I haven't thought about a, a Sequoia in probably 10 years. So <laughs> <laughs> forgive me. Yeah. But uh, uh, yeah, I, I, I think it, I'm, I'm expecting good things. I think it's going to look good because I like the Tundra and yeah. I mean, again, you know, economies of scale, build an SUV on the truck platform. Boom. I, again, I can, can, can conceivably see the Sequoia doing better than the Tundra yeah. personally. And Toyota's, Toyota typically doesn't screw things up. They have a sterling reputation for quality still, and they're not, they're very, very conservative when it comes to things. So I mm -hmm. suspect this product will be rock solid right out of the gate, which yeah. is a good thing. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, move, moving along, cylinder counts. They have been dropping like snowflakes during a blizzard. V8s are critically endangered these days. V12s are nearly extinct, of course, because of the ongoing uh, electric car revolution that we're sort of in the midst of right now. Um, but uh, you still can get a few vehicles with a good 12-cylinder engine including the BMW 7 Series that you see right now. Uh, this is the swan song for BMW and the V12. They are sending this, this engine configuration off into the sunset by building just 12 M760i sedans for the U.S., and this will sort of mark the end of 12-cylinder engine production at BMW, which... I can't imagine they sold very many 12-cylinder engines, so it's not going to be that big of a deal. However, I am still sad to see it go because 12-cylinder engines are absolutely lovely. If you have never driven one, they are quite an experience. I don't know. Have you have you experienced one, Sean? I have once, yeah. Um, and it is just unlike anything. You know, like you, a lot of people have driven a V8 in some form, if it's a pickup truck, a, a muscle car, sports car, whatever. A V12 is just like, wow, especially if you get into a naturally aspirated situation where it's just this giant lump providing all of the motivation and crazy amounts of torque. Mm -hmm. um, it's it's a very cool engine and it's understandable why <laughs> um, V12s are dying. Uh, mm -hmm. they, they don't they don't really serve much of a purpose when you can get 
identical, if not way better performance from like a twin turbo V8 or something like that in this mm-hmm. case. Um, but really, I think the V12's calling card is more about like it's, it's that personality or or an aura it brings to a vehicle. You know, like BMW's V12 isn't you know like a Ferrari V12, but still in, in the same vein. Uh, you know, a V12 brings so much character to a car, especially when you're talking about basically what is BMW's full size limousine. You yeah. know, and you got this giant V12 under the hood. Uh, yeah. So s- sad to see it go for sure, but not surprising in the in the least yeah and, and the thing about v12s are sort of an uh, they're an occasion to drive them typically they're super smooth because they're basically two straight sixes bolted together um and they 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 don't sound like a straight six they don't sound like a v6 they don't sound like a v8 they have their own character to them and they're just very nice all of the ones that i have driven so i'd be sad to see this go mm-hmm. it's a twin turbo 6.6 liter v12 with 601 horsepower and 590 pound-feet of torque is what the uh, the M760i will be getting. And if you can't count your cylinders by the dozen, what is the point, Sean? I mean, honestly. Yeah, so, yeah seriously, it's just, yeah. this is all a waste of time. All, <laughs> all, all a waste of time. I can't believe all these automakers just pouring resources into electric motors and battery packs when, like, we were not even going to have a cylinder anymore. <laughs> no, no. No, that'll get you zero to 60 in 3.6 seconds. And this car ain't cheap. It's going to start around $201,000. So that's a pretty good reason, uh, explanation right there why the V12 is going away. Because they ain't cheap. No. They ain't cheap to buy. They ain't cheap to build. They ain't cheap to fuel. No. So. Yeah. Uh, BMW, unfortunately, they didn't release any photos of the actual V12 final edition vehicle. So the photos you're seeing are just of an M760i that has the same V12. But they're saying anyone who, one of the 12 people in North America who will purchase one of these build slots, they'll have the ability to send it to BMW individual. They'll be able mm-hmm. to pers- you know, customize it, personalize it with exterior colors and upholstery options. But they plan on putting in some, uh, putting some. Uh, unique wheels on the on the car the under the engine bay is going to have like a final edition uh sill plate for the v12 engine and a few nice touches to mark uh the end of production and i believe craig each owner will get a nice little (coughs) desk trinket they said oh how nice more stuff to dust yes (laughs) Um, but it's interesting like they're limiting production to 12 for the U.S. at least, which is kind of a cutesy thing to do. But I'm sure they could sell more than a dozen of them. If this is like the end of the line, this is the exclusive model. If they really wanted to be a money grab, make this a money grab, they could they could up that production a little bit, I think. Yeah, 24. Why not? Any multiple of 12. I mean, <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah, so sad time to see the V12 going away from BMW for sure. But it sounds like they're building a special car, a fitting little mm-hmm. tribute. Quite frankly, they don't have to do anything at all, you know. So it's nice to see them mark the occasion. BMW understands that they do have a history with the V12. They've offered a V12 engine for quite some time in vehicles. And uh, the 7 Series is the only way you can get that today. Mm-hmm. Anywho, uh, I would like to invite you to head on over to the proper roadshow youtube channel the main channel i want you to like any videos you see there please subscribe as well that's where you can find a whole bunch of great stuff from vehicle reviews to first drives to gosh what else what else is on there sean we've got auto show coverage anything in between you want brian cooley he's there doing all sorts of cool stuff with anything i I mean you name it that guy's got his hands on everything (laughs) He's, he's, he's a legend, yes. and he is uh, very much uh, a presence on our YouTube channel. So check out the Roadshow YouTube channel if you haven't already. Like and subscribe. There we've got a lovely video that our editor-in-chief, Tim Stevens, has uh, that he hosted. It's a review of a lovely V12-powered Lamborghini. So that's sort of – this might be the V12 show, Sean. Yeah. Really, we've got BMW, T's and Tim's video, and our next story here in the second half also yeah. – uh, is related somewhat to the V12 engine. But uh, yeah. yeah, check out Roadshow on the YouTubes. I don't think you'll be disappointed. 
<laughs> yeah, and and that was a, a very good segue because, like you said, it it does seem to be the V12 show. Maybe Toyota will put a V12 in the new Sequoia and surprise Ooh, us. You know, two two three point five liter V6s that'd be interesting. Yeah, yeah there you go. The, the world, the the future is wide open. But anyway, <laughs> doubt it. Uh, <laughs> what is very realistic is this new SUV coming from Aston Martin. It will be a performance version of the DBX SUV. It could wear the DBX S name. And Aston Martin is saying it's going to be the most powerful luxury SUV in the world. I almost went into a Jeremy Clarkson in the world. Kind of thing. <laughs> uh, no, but I definitely won't do that because uh, my impressions are terrible. Anyway, uh so goes it. The rumor says that instead of the Mercedes AMG sourced twin turbo V8, Aston Martin is going to put its in-house V12 into the DBX, uh, which definitely could crank up the horsepower numbers. And I believe what I saw was currently the luxury SUV that makes the most power is the Lamborghini Urus. Mm -hmm. uh, that was about 641 horsepower. Um, if, Aston Martin's recent V12 applications are any measure of what we could see from a DBS, uh, a DBXS. Uh, mm -hmm. We could be looking at close to 700 horsepower in a luxury SUV. Whew. That's a lot. Well, if it's going to be, because what does the, the Durango Hellcat have? It was something like 700 horsepower, but I guess the qualifier is luxury SUV. Yeah, I was going to say, I, obviously, that's what, you know, I don't think there are many people cross shopping a DBX and a Durango Hellcat or <laughs> even a Durango 392 or whatever it is. Yeah. That would be, I'd love to see that marketing research to see those profiles be like, how is this person crossing? Yeah, you know, like. It just <laughs> makes no sense. Yeah. But but Aston Martin's V12 is very lovely as well. Yeah. The twin Turbo 5.2 is uh, if you get a chance, it's highly recommended. <laughs> so. Yeah, seriously. And they're they're putting it in. They have a, a one-off, not a one-off, but a limited run vehicle called the Speedster uh, that they're putting the V12 in. And it's coming. the V12 is coming back to the Vantage, uh, you know, for a production run. Mm -hmm. So that's all exciting. And I mean, really, as Aston Martin has struggled for quite a long time now, the V12 has always been one of its things. You know, mm -hmm. like you can't really go to many places and get, a sports car with a V12 engine. You, we just yeah. talked about it with BMW. Like the only way you got a BMW V12 is in the seven series. And that's not the most sporting drive in the world. It's a comfortable one and a nice one, but it's not sporty, you know, yeah. or for your performance needs kind of thing. Yeah. The question I always have is like, how much do you need the four liter twin turbo V8 that they borrow from Mercedes AMG is a lovely engine. It gets you 540 plus horsepower just about as much torque. Like, mm -hmm. there's no shortage of giddy up in this thing. <laughs> but I guess there's no, always yeah. room for more, right? Yeah, I mean, let's face it. I mean, that V12 engine's probably paid for itself 80 times, 80 billion times over. So they're just like, can we stick it in the SUV and charge more for it? I mean, <laughs> like, yeah. that's, that's me being realistic. You know, yeah. like, you know people are going to buy it. I could... I could see it having a pretty good take rate alongside the V8 powered model because at the prices, the DBX costs, what's a, another 50 grand or whatever they're going to charge more for it or something, you know, for the buyer, it's a rounding error. Yeah. It's pocket change, pocket change. <laughs> I wish I had those problems. Pocket change. Oh my God. My wad of $50,000 lost oh, on the couch no. cushion. My God. Oh dear. Well, let the cleaners find it. It'll yeah. be fine. Yeah. <laughs> or, if, or if it just the dog grabs it and it's gone it, I mean, yeah it's, like, oh dear it's no big deal no big deal send, send reginald out to get to the bank to to get another stack please <laughs> yeah yeah but uh the, this super suv will debut on february 1st uh if you're confused by the video being shown that says 1 2 2022 obviously the date is written the opposite way where europeans tend to write it that way so it did not actually much more sensible way it day, is it is month, yeah year. it is very very sensible indeed but it definitely still throws me off when i see a date like that when it's like yes. 14 to 2022 oh that's valentine's day that i just named i think oh, there you go Perfect. Yeah. You better get some chocolates yeah <laughs> have some chocolates, Andy. yeah some, some chocolates anyway, so, are on the way yeah maybe v12s aren't dead after all i mean BMW is getting rid of theirs, but Aston Martin, it sounds like 
could be expanding the availability of its V12. But sadly, one thing is dying, kind of, sort of. The Roadshow News recap is going to take a bit of a hiatus going forward. This is our last show for a while, probably. And that is because, Sean, you are heading out to greener pastures. Very sad to report that you've got a different job. You've greener, betrayed us all. Heading to greener pastures made it sound like I'm di- dead. <laughs> um, <laughs> woof. Uh, yes, I am leaving Roadshow by CNET, which means uh, the guys and gals who help do all the YouTube stuff are uh, busy looking at things. And uh, Roadshow News Recap and the Roadshow News Channel uh, just need some reconfiguration as I depart the team. Um, but yes, so for as now, you devastate the team, as, yeah, as, as I just you... ruin everyone's lives, yes, yes, uh, that kind of thing. But uh, no, so the, the channel will be taking a bit of a break. Um, and I would, you know, I'm not going to use this as a pedestal, but it's been an absolute blast. Uh, I by our count, Craig, uh, we've done 41 of these live shows since we started Ooh. in uh, March of was it last year yeah no or 2000 was it 2020 or 2021 that we started I think this it was last year okay. it's all a blur who knows yeah, it, is, it is all I a blur, go but... and look on youtube but eh. yeah yeah not worth it we're not that good no. um <laughs> but it's been an absolute blast chatting with craig here uh super fun doing those uh news hits for everybody reading your comments interacting with you guys you guys would say go max when i'd wear my Red Bull racing hat, you know, so and I, I saw that it was super fun. Um, uh, clapped back at some of the Mercedes fans and in, in good jest. So that was really fun. And it's been a great time. And thank you so much to the video producers along the way who helped make this show possible. And I'm sure that everyone here is going to do amazing things. And that's why we definitely want you guys to watch the show and enjoy what we do to check out the proper roadshow channel. You probably already do, but yeah, that's where you'll get your uh, doses of Craig Cole. If you can't get enough of Mr. Cole and all sorts of other great people. I mean, a little spoonful is enough of Craig Cole, but if you need two tablespoons or something like that, you can go to the proper roadshow channel. Try living as him. It's awful. Yeah. Walk a, walk a foot in his steps. Oh dear. Shoes, whatever the saying is, God. <laughs> in my uh, moccasins that I'm wearing right now, they Very are nice. Uh, what are they called? They're uh, the uh, the hideaways. Hideaways. So Comfortable. I'm all about comfort here. Arch support. Yeah. Definitely no arch support. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, make an investment. <laughs> Perhaps I should. But yes, this will be our last show for a while. But uh, we thank you all for watching and we hope uh, you've enjoyed it as much as we have enjoyed producing it. But uh, I think we're going to wrap this one up. It's goodbye for now, but maybe not forever. So uh, thank you so much. And Sean, as always, it's a pleasure to see you. And I will be devastated uh, once you have left us. (laughs) It's been a pleasure every single time. And uh also check out the roadshow.com uh by the time you see this we had news go live about the escalate v so you can see some photos of that super suv that cadillac is building after thinking about it for about 15 years it feels like uh it's coming so there's all you'll get everything you need on the roadshow.com and the proper roadshow channel i'd just like to emphasize that thank you guys so much thank you craig and craig take us out Yes, so thank you, Sean. Thank you, production team. Thank you all for watching Roadshow News Recap, where we dissect and discuss the biggest automotive stories of the past week. And as I've said, I'm not sure when we'll be back, but until then, thanks again and take care.